Hello again, great to have your company. Thanks for watching Australia's best online football show. We're coming to you from Gwelup, Croatia, who are taking on Fremantle, Croatia, a big game for both teams. More on Gwelup very, very shortly. Coming up this week, a heartwarming and inspiring story about a Perth teenager where football is helping him achieve his dreams. The Match of the Week highlights and results from all the state league. And we catch up with former soccer Stan Lazaridis, who talks about life beyond football. That's coming up very, very soon. But first, Well Up Croatia is an amateur team determined to go all the way to the top. From humble beginnings, the club is now a home to a community who's passionate about football and all of its glory. They started as a, just a social club and we built up uh, through the, all these years, obviously to come now to the Premier Amateurs and we looking forward to go even further if we can. And do you think that the club is very important for the Croatian community here in Perth? Well, it is, because we have another Croatian club, obviously it's a set of the River Frio Croatia, which is a sister club. We own the land here, and we have a, the mine club, which is, we hold all our functions and stuff. And it's a very important for Croatian community on the, on the north side and the south side, who is a member by this club. I joined the club last season, came over from Sterling Lions. I was assisting Paul Lincoln there with the first team. So last year we sat down with the president of the club and uh, we made a deal and obviously tried to get our club promoted into the Sunday Premier League. So what we've done last year is actually assembled a, a young squad of the players. Uh, some of the older players we let go from previous season. It was a very successful season last year. We managed to uh, move up and now we're in the Sunday Premier League. The club itself wants to play obviously at the highest possible level they can possibly be in. Now our goal is obviously for the next five years try to establish ourselves within the league and then hopefully move on and gain a promotion. Came here two years ago and started playing with Gwilup and enjoyed it all last year. So came back this year. When I came to Gwilup, it's more like a family than a football club so that just did it all for me. I just want to play football and enjoy myself. Gwilup is the place to be. You say it's like a family. Uh, why is it like family? I don't know, it's probably down to Yuri, Laura, uh, Laura's Yuri's wife, Laura's mum, she cooks all the dinners for the players, Ivan, her father is here, every training session. The minute you come into the club you feel welcome, so it's like a family. Coming down to Sunday leagues, it was a big eye-opener even for myself. What I've noticed is actually a lot of talented players that are playing in this league, they could possibly play at a higher level. The league as such is very strong. We can see ourselves actually moving forward. The club definitely is one of the growing clubs in Western Australia and I can see them in the near future actually competing at a higher level. Michael Maslin is a 17-year-old boy with cerebral palsy. A football player, manager, referee and now a Grand Marshal here at Woodvale FC. We have a chat to Michael to find out why he dedicates so much of his time to the game. After a couple of years uh, managing here and working behind the scenes, they came to me and they said, uh, do you want to become a Grand Marshal? And I said, uh, even though that's not where I wanted to start, uh, it's, it's a start nonetheless and it's a, it's a chance to get, me, to get my name out there, to get some recognition and to make myself feel like I'm actually doing something in the community that's actually worthwhile. You've obviously had some challenges that you've had to overcome with your disability. Tell us how you've overcome those challenges. There are a lot of things that I can't do. The battle may seem physical, but it's more mental than physical. The important thing is not to let it get to your head, to continue to, to strive for the best. Football is the world game. It has the ability to build relationships and, uh, you know, I have a relationship with football that will never be broken and, uh, you know, this is just another way for me to feel like I'm actually being involved in one of the fields that I absolutely adore. What advice would you give to other people, uh, perhaps with disabilities, to help them get involved in sport? Just always remain positive. Start simply and then continue to build from there. You have to utilise the support networks that you, that you have available to you. You can do anything that you set your mind to. So Michael, where to from here? What are your football aspirations and dreams? I said growing up um, that I want to try and see if I can become a, a professional manager. You know, growing up I watched the Barcelona Dream Team of 94 and I grew up watching Liverpool as well. It would be nice to manage one of those two clubs if I can, but that's where I would like to be, but I know that takes time.
Healthway and Football West have teamed up to find the Smarter Than Smoking Junior Player of the Month. Whether you're the star of your team or you just love to have fun with football, you can be in the running to win an Apple iPad. Each week, I'll be asking a simple question and the answer will be revealed later in the show. Check out footballwest.com.au for details and tune into our new Football 360 Junior Show to see if you've won our fantastic prize. This week's Smarter Than Smoking Junior Player of the Month question is, how long should you warm up? To be in the running for an Apple iPad, check out footballwest.com.au and stay tuned to Football 360. Time now to take a look at the Match of the Week highlights, kicking off with the big one, Bayswater hosting Sorrento. <music> Round 11 and back at Frank Drago Reserve, Bayswater City unbeaten all season were aiming for another win, this time against Sorrento. And it seemed the riding was on the wall after the second minute for the goals, Gustavo Marulanda with some magic. Two minutes later, Sorrento fired back and were on level terms through Jamie Harnwell. Sorrento's Gavin Knight proved he was a dead ball specialist, sending this free kick into the back of the net. Sorrento 2-1 up in just a quarter of an hour. Five minutes later, it was Harnwell, this time younger brother Todd, who advanced the score for Sorrento. In the second half, Harnwell Senior was on the score of sheet again with a cool, calm finish. Bayswater were without suspended striker Steve Burton and struggled to create chances, although this effort from Gustavo Caraccioni hit the post. 4-1 to Sorrento, Bayswater's 17-game unbeaten run coming to an end. To go behind immediately when you just, you know, you've, you've gone out there, you've got, as you say, a game plan, and to go one behind, it, it, it makes it difficult, but, you know, we, we pushed forward and, uh, you know, fortunately we scored ourselves early on, got back to 1-1, probably woke us up, not saying that we weren't playing very well anyway, but it probably made us even more that we had to sort of, uh, you know, play well. Oh, the feel in the dressing rooms, you know, we've gone 17 games unbeaten and I suppose the, um, the bubble up to burst sooner or later. Uh, take no credit away from Sorrento, the, they rolled the sleeves up and uh, worked hard and, you know, they, they did 11 individual jobs. If they do 11 individual jobs, you're going to win the game. At Leiter Stadium, a healthy crowd gathered for the clash between Floriot and Perth. From the stands, former Athena boy and Socceroo Stan Lazaridis looked on. It's good to come back and see all the familiar faces and it's good to see some you know, new talent coming through. And uh, yeah, just as I said, it just feels like I've come home again. Athena aiming for their sixth straight victory and that plan looked like a reality early on. Floriot goal sneak Benny Cavacchio was fouled in the box. Up stepped captain Mark Pritchard to put the ball away. But, for the second time in as many weeks, the Welshman failed to score. Minutes later, Perth made a mill of this back pass, causing the Azuri some heart flutters, but the ball ran wide. In the second 45, both teams had chances to steal the win. This effort by Floriot's Ludo Boy, saved by Perth's Jason Saldaris. In the dying minutes, Floriot had another chance to take the three points, but somehow the ball didn't want to go in. Both teams left to share the spoils at the final whistle. In other results, a five-goal haul by Dumba Makechi helped NTC thump Armadale. Inglewood outplayed ECU, Coburn outmuscled Balcata, and Sterling disposed of Bunbury comfortably. 
to the ladder and the gap is closing, but Bayswater is still on top. Sterling now only three points behind thanks to Sorrento's win over City. The Gulls still locked in third, Coburn take out fourth spot, and Inglewood United round out the top five, edging out Athena on goal difference. To next week and Coburn take on Sterling, Floriot host Inglewood in what will be a battle to cement a top five place. Joondalup will be aiming for points against Bunbury, Armadale travel to Balcatta, Sorrento may find more than what they bargained for when they meet NTC, and Bayswater host the informed Perth. Meantime, the WA Day long weekend also marked the second round of the Cool Ridge Cup with the main match between Floriot and Sorrento. Sorrento looking for revenge after they lost to the Blue and Whites a week earlier in the league fixture. The first half lacked excitement, but the second made up for it. The action started around 15 minutes into the second stanza when Gavin Knight was brought down by Athena's Callum France just outside the penalty area. The Floriot defender was shown a straight red, up stepped Knight to take the free kick, who in stunning fashion sent the free kick into the top corner. It was all Sorrento from there. In the 82nd minute, Jamie Harnwell cut the ball back across goal. Sadly for Floriot, the ball ricocheted off a defender's leg and the ball landed into Brad Effie's goal. Less than a minute later, Knight was on the score sheet again, catching Effie off guard, shooting at the near post. Sorrento threw with a comfortable 3 0 win. In other cup ties, Sterling downed ECU and Inglewood advanced through after disposing Armadale. Well, as you probably saw in the Match of the Week highlight, Stan Lazaridis was amongst the crowd in the big match between Florida Athena and Perth. Football 360 asked him about life beyond football and his thoughts about the Socceroos' chances for World Cup qualification come Brazil next year. Australia's been a bit up and down and, you know, their form's been here and there. But I think, um, I think especially at home, I think, you know, we're going to be strong. But, you know, we've still got a lot of work to do and Holger, is, Holger Rossi's got, you know, a lot with tinkering with his players and, and hopefully can start, you know, forming a more, you know, stabilising his side, of the, you know, to go on to the World Cup. I have to be honest to say, I, I, I do feel I've got to put something back into the game. It's just, I suppose, time and just waiting for the right opportunity. But, you know, somewhere where I started, like here, it's great. But at the moment, Chris Barber's doing a wonderful job. And, and you know, it, it doesn't matter who's at the helm. As long as, you know, football is, is, is going, you know, is growing and young guys are getting that opportunity. And hopefully they can then push on into Perth Glory and Alistair Edwards and... Gareth Navin can pick up the exciting talents. If you missed our new and exciting junior show, Shoot, then tune in to Football West TV. We've got some good tips for every footballer, even some adults could probably learn a trick or two. And that brings an end to this week's episode of Football 360. Well done to Fremantle and Gwilap Croatia. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week. Until then, it's bye for now.